this video what we're going to be doing is first we're going to start with adding sound effects to the game. So to do that there's going to be a link in the description where you can download a folder that's going to have three sound effects in there. And once you get that downloaded just go to your games directory and paste that folder in there. So it's just called sounds. And as you can see there's three sounds in there. We'll add that to get. And then once you get these imported we need to initialize them in the game. So you can just go up to the very top right under where we added the pictures and what we're going to say is so there's three there's three sounds one's going to be for the shooting um, sound effect whenever you shoot a bullet so we'll call that shoot and we're going to set that equal to pygame dot mixer dot sound and we just pass in the name so that one's called shoot dot wave the next one we have to do is the sound effect for whenever a bullet collides with one of the asteroids or the alien ship so we're going to call those like bang sound and so that equals the same thing pygame.mixer.sound and so there's two of them right so there's a I believe there's a small and a large the small one's gonna be for like small asteroids and the large one will be for the bigger asteroid and the alien ship so we'll do bang sound uh, we also have to actually just say um sounds slash is it sounds or sound yeah sounds and then slash then you can put the name in there. So this one is sounds slash bang large. We'll rename this bang large sound. And then we can copy this line, paste it down below, and just rename it to bang small sound. And over here we'll say small as well. So for this game, what I'm going to do is instead of always having the sound effects, I'm going to have it to where the user can pick if they want the sound effects to be on or not. So we need a boolean, which we can initialize down here, and we are going to call it um, is sound on, and by default it will be true. So the sound effects will be on when, where the game runs, and then the user can just press like type M if they want to mute the game, and then type M again if, if they want to unmute it. So the way we're going to do this is, for starters, we'll go down to the very bottom, right, we can go right here in this for loop. And in the if statement where it says it checks if, if there's a key that's been pressed, we're going to go under all this, and we're going to say if event.type is equal to pygame.k underscore m, then what we're going to do is set is game, no, is sound on, is going to equal not is sound on. So that will just... If, it's, if it was false, then it'll set it to true, and if it was true, it'll set it to false. So it'll just reverse what it is. And now we have to go through the code and, um, and add the sound effects to the proper times that they should be working, right? So for starters, we can start off with the bullet shooting. That's going to be down here. There's two places we can shoot bullets, right? So one of them is inside of this if statement, where we say player bullets out of pen. What we're also going to say is shoot dot play and I believe that's all we need to say there and then we also need to add the sound effect whenever the rapid fire is on and that comes on up above let's find that line yes yeah, so right here if the user presses space and rapid fire is on it shoots a bullet so we're going to do the same thing shoot dot play add some parentheses so now when we run this and we press space it crashes because k underscore m is not valid. Let's see why. Event. Oh, so I put dot type. It needs to be dot key. Let's run that. So now it still crashes. Oh, it needs to be a lowercase m. So now when we run this, the sound should be on. If I press space, now you can hear the sound effect. And it's kind of loud. So that's kind of what it's going to sound like. And since it's so loud, I'm going to go up to the very top where we initialized it, and we can actually just, instead of like changing the original volume of the wave file, we can set a new volume. So we can go down here. We're going to say shoot dot set underscore volume. We're going to give it like a, a decimal value of 0.25. So that'll make it a fourth as loud as what it just was. So now... That's that's pretty reasonable. 
So next we have to add a sound effect for whenever a bullet collides with the asteroid or the alien. And to do that we're going to go down to the while loop where we check for collisions. And I believe right... So here we're looping through the aliens and here we're looping through the bullets. So this is whenever an alien collides with a bullet. We can say bang large sound dot play. Give us some parentheses so now the large sound effect will happen whenever we hit an alien. We also got to do it whenever we hit an asteroid. So right here for player bullets and then we're also looping through the asteroids. In this if statement we've hit a rank 3 asteroid which is the largest one. And so in that case we're going to say bang large sound dot play. And then in the other ones, so like if it's ranked 2 or below, we'll do the bang small sound. Dot play. And we'll do that in the else statement as well. Bang small sound. Dot play. So now we've got those sound effects added to the game. We should also probably change the volume because they're probably going to be too loud. So we'll say bang large. Dot set volume. 0.25. Copy that. Paste it and then just change large to small. So now when we run this, so we can still shoot, we get that sound effect. And now when I hit the asteroids, it makes that sound effect. So that's all looking good. And like, as you just heard, for the larger asteroid, it makes a difference, like a deeper sound. And, well, I just lost, so if I press space, it'll all disappear. But that's kind of one thing I wanted to change, actually. So we set the logic down here on the very bottom to where if the user wants to play again, they press space. But I don't want that because sometimes whenever you're just spamming the space bar, the game ends and can, like starts over without you even realizing. So instead, I want to have a different key for having the user be able to play again. So let's just go down here, add another if statement, and we'll say if event dot key is equal to pi game dot k underscore tab. Yeah, so the user can now just press tab to play again, and I think that will work a little bit better. So we will go in this logic. So right here, everything in, like, under this else, we need it. Paste it right there. Actually, before we paste it, we want to say if game over, then it'll do all of this, and then we can just get rid of all, the, all of this code. So let's just make sure that's working. You run it. Let's lose real quick. There's one collision, two, three. So now if I press tab, the game starts over again. And since it still says press space to play again, we can just go up to the redraw game function and make it say press tab to play again. So that's going to be down right here. So here it says press space. We're going to change that to tab. And now that is looking good as well. The next thing I wanted to add to the game is having a high score to where it saves the high score. Like in the same run, it won't save it if you exit the game and then come back to it. But like if you play multiple rounds back to back, it'll track what your highest score was. So we're going to go in here, we're going to say high score is equal to zero by default. And then down below the very end of the code where we do the game over, we're going to add a if statement. So we're going to say if score is greater than high score then it will update high score then high score is going to equal score and so to display that on the screen i think we're just going to have it displayed right under um the actual score so we're going to go up to the redraw game function which is right here and so we have score text is all this so we can copy that paste it and we're going to call this high score text and it's going to say high score and we're going to pass in the high score value and then we have to just display that on the screen so we're going to go down here we'll say win dot blitz high score text and then give it a, um, a location so we're going to say so the actual score text is 25 pixels high and it's on the far right so we're gonna we can use the same logic that we used up there so screen width minus the high score text dot get width and then minus 25 
And then as for the y, we want it to be below this score text. So we can do 25 plus um, score text dot get height. So that's going to add how, how like, tall the score text is. And then I mean, instead of saying 25, we'll add like 35 to have a 10 pixel gap between them. So I think that should be good. Let's run this. Yeah, so now we've got the score and the high score. And so the score high score is going to stay zero until we lose. So let's collide with these. There's, we lost, that's three lives that we just lost, right? So now our high our score is 120 and our high score is zero, but as soon as I press space, or no tab, the high score doesn't change. Let's see why. Okay, so we're actually checking too late because by the time we're checking, we already reset the score. So we, we need to move score equals zero after the if statement so that it doesn't reset it before we check. So let's do that one more time. Let's shoot these guys. So we got 100 points. Now when I press space or no tab, the high score is 100. And if I beat that, it'll, if I, so let's say I get like, so there's 50 points. Let's say I lose before I beat the high score. Well, then it's not going to update. It's going to stay 100. And yeah, that's looking good. I also want to add the sound effect whenever the ship collides with an asteroid, not just the bullets. Okay, so right here is where we're checking for an, a collision between the player and the asteroid. So if there is a collision, we'll just play the, the large sound effect. So bang, large sound dot play and yeah so now if I go and hit this we get a sound effect if I press M now it's muted and so like there's still oh we made a mistake okay so to make the mute function work what we actually need to do is preface each of these dot plays with an if statement that is completely my bad so in, instead of just saying bang large sound dot play we have to say if is sound on then it'll play it right so then if that's false then it won't play a sound so then if we go down to the bottom right here we also have right there we have shoot dot play we have to say if is sound on then shoot dot play we also go on right here if is shoot on is sound on shoot dot play we've also got one right there we'll say if is shoot on or is sound on bang small sound dot play we can copy this is sound on we also need one right here for rank three let's add that over and we need one for rank two so paste that tab that over and then if this one's set i think we've got like one more yeah, the alien, so paste, tab. Yeah, so now when we run this, so there's going to be sound by default. And then if I mute it, now there's no more sounds, right? If I shoot them, nothing happens. If I go collide with them, there's no sound. And then if I press M, well, now we get the sound back. So yeah, I mean, that's all looking pretty good. It is looking very good. It's a little bit laggy on my computer because it's... My computer just kind of sucks, but on yours it should be work, like running a lot smoother. And yeah, I think that really wraps it up for everything that I wanted to add to the game. I really hope you guys enjoyed this series. This is going to be the last video. Um, just comment down below if you, there's any other videos that you want to see, like some other games using Pi Game that you want to learn how to do. And I will definitely start working on that as soon as possible. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and be sure to subscribe. Peace.